Well, welcome back. At this moment, I'm pleased to say police officers are en route to particular locations in various parts of the country, following up leads which have been provided tonight by Crime Watch viewers. But I must say a disappointing response so far on the murder of Geraldine Polk near her home in Cardiff. Someone knows who committed that crime. Our lines are still open, they will be till midnight, and detectives are still hoping for that one crucial call. Let's look first at the robbery outside Unipart in Cowley in Oxford. Two gunmen tried to raid a security van, but they were foiled when other drivers and nearby workers intervened. Come on, let's get here! Uh, Dave Buckingham, you had a really good response on this one. Oh, yes, we had an excellent response. We've had over 200 calls now. What about identities? What about names? We had a video fit for, for one of the robbers. Yes, good video fit. A uh, man, 30, 35 years, uh, six foot tall, short, dark hair, and we've had a good response and some names put forward. And the tracksuit, uh, I know that uh, you've now discovered all about the tracksuit and the logo on it. Yes, it's guaranteed Irish and definitely from Ireland. And we know that it was bought there because there was a receipt in the pocket, so there's obviously an Irish connection to this somehow. The Vauxhall Cavalier, dark blue car that was uh, used by the robbers, has that turned up? Remember, one of the windows, of course, was smashed. Yes, a lot of good information about that. Um, we're following up leads straight away. Very what, good. What about the number plate? You wanted to know where that had come from, the false plate made up by somebody? Yes, and also another good response. Um, people have rung in and we're following that up as quickly as possible. The gun that was used turned out to be a, a, a Brunei replica of a, of a Beretta automatic. Now, you don't know where that came from, you've recovered the weapon. Had anybody reported it stolen or missing? Yes, we've had a couple of people ring in okay. and say they've had that type of weapon stolen. Um, quite close to Oxford as well. So, another, another good lead, we'll follow that up as quickly as we can. All in all, very encouraging response. Very encouraging indeed. Good, Sue. Well, now let's see if anybody's been recognised from our photocall cases. David, first of all, there was Farzad Baboud, who was wanted in connection with a rape inquiry. Yes, sir. we've had 20 calls, in fact, over 20 calls now on that, and I heard others just coming in. A number of them give us positive sightings in the Harrogate and Leeds area, so that looks very optimistic. <laughs> we discovered in the main programme that there have been some names for the off-licence robber in Merseyside. Yes, we've had 10 calls on that one. We're now pretty sure we know who he is, we just don't know where he is. So if you know where he is now, please still call in. We need to know urgently. What about we can't Will say too much on that for obvious reasons. Right. What about William Dolman? Yes, he's... We've had ten calls on that. It's brought a multitude of sightings, well-spaced around the country, so that's a little vague at this time. Again, if you know where he is, call us. We'd also had a few calls on the fraudster in Merseyside, 120 frauds or more he'd committed. Yes, indeed, and three of those... Allegedly. Are given us the same name, uh, and one of them is from a very reliable source, so we're very optimistic there. We've just got to locate him again. David, thank you. Well, now the tragedy of Geraldine Polk, a young woman on her way home from a nightclub who was murdered in sight of her own doorstep. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, then. Yeah. Phil Jones, as Sue said at the beginning, a very disappointing response. Yes, it has been. Uh, we've had a number of calls uh, uh, giving us some ideas about the key and about the rugby jersey. But insofar as uh, her movements out of Jackson's or her movements after leaving the taxi uh, that night this concern in Fairwater, nothing. Now, tell us about the key. This key, I mean, for anybody who didn't see the original programme has now come in, a key was discovered near where she was attacked. Yes, it was discovered uh, found 20 yards from the first site of the uh, scene of the attack on Geraldine. It's uh, a duplicate key cut from a blank, uh, embossed with the word ILCO, I-L-C-O. Um, it will fit a lock, which itself is probably fitted to an aluminium double-glazed door, probably a commercial door as opposed to a house, but we wouldn't rule a house out. Uh, or the bottom rail of a roller shutters, or even a padlock. OK, above all, you need to hear from anybody who uh, knew Geraldine, particularly who, who had met her recently, and you need to find three people who were walking near by where she was killed, but yeah. no calls from them so far. That was, uh, of course, on the Friday night before Christmas in uh, Waterhill Road in Cardiff. Sue. Well, now the murder of Derek Johnson at his office in East London. Derek had built up a thriving import and export business and he was working late, as he often did. The office cleaners remember that Derek took two telephone calls that evening. The first one seemed friendly and very short, the second a little bit longer and much more serious. And Dave Easy's been taking the calls, both here and in the incident room, and I gather the incident room in Woolwich has been inundated with calls. Yes, we've had an excellent result with the, with the rope. 
in particular, and a lot of the phone calls have certainly helped us out. We've also had some phone calls regarding the motor cars, which is also encouraging. And I'd also like to just very quickly ask for the person that called regarding the address in Canning Town. That is a very important address, and I would like that person to call us back. He do they don't have to give their name or address, but just speak to us, please. Right, so there are some details you need to check, and just to repeat, you don't have to give your name and address. Please do call back again. Mr Easy, thank you very much. Well, now into the desk, here's uh, Jackie Hames. Let's start with that rape in, in Rainhill. Yes. Quite a lot of calls on it, I think. Yeah, over 60. In fact, the incident room was inundated. The majority of them were su suggesting names. There's one person I would like to appeal to to ring again. They rang the incident room in Prescott and apparently saw the man and the victim that night together at a bus stop. Please ring back. You are a vital witness and we would very much like to speak to you again. Of course, your call would be treated in absolute confidence. So please, if you're watching, ring again. Anything else on that case? Well, there was a lot, number of the calls were suggesting names. Um, one in particular was a local man, so we're hopeful on that too. Now, the, the body that, that was discovered in Leeds, which was mummified, I mean, it looked as though it had died between one, two, three years ago. Yeah. Um, dumped six weeks ago in Allerton Park, Leeds, a dozen calls all giving different names. Let's have another look at him. Remember, he's in his 20s, and if you do know him, please ring us. And a woman's body that was dumped in a park in south-east London. Yeah, uh, we've had 16 calls, unfortunately no names yet. Um, this was Sunday the 3rd of February. She was dumped in Telegraph Hill Park in uh, south-east London. Please, if you know her or have any idea who she is, please ring us. About 30 years old, quite short, about five feet tall. Yeah. And have been on a cross-channel ferry recently, we think. That's right. A burglary in Maida Vale, where people had run up first and said they were from Interflora about to deliver some flowers to see if anyone was in. That's right, yes, this is on the 13th of December. We had 12 calls, nothing very encouraging. Have another listen to the tape and Let's see if you recognise them. We've got a basket of flowers to be delivered. Can you tell me what time should we return in? Um, I don't know, but I, I'm here till 3 o'clock, so... She won't be returning before then? Uh, sorry? What time will she be returning? I don't know, I think about 4 o'clock. Okay, but you're there till three. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Then there was the stabbing of the police constable in Bristol. Mm. Yes, this is the 28th of January at the Gateway Supermarket in Bristol. Uh, we've had nearly 30 calls, mainly about the red Toyota Supra car that was stolen in Oxford. Um, the two men were wearing balaclavas, but if anybody has any information, please ring. It's something we didn't mention before, in fact, there's a £20,000 reward lead, uh, payable on the arrest and conviction of any of these two men, so please ring up. Then there are a couple of men who were wanted in connection with what seems to have been a fraud, which is uh, answering ads in local papers for cars for sale, saying, we'll sell your car in 72 hours. And yep. the cars disappeared. Yep. Well, over 30 calls. Um, and I have to say that we've already had an arrest on this case, which is great news. Unfortunately, I can't give you too many details, but next month we'll hear all about it, I'm sure. Jackie, thanks very much. Sue? And on that note, that's it for now. Thank you if you've called to help. If you haven't got through yet, our lines are going to be open until midnight, so that's another 25 minutes. And all the local numbers will be shown on your screen in just a minute. And we'll be back, uh, as usual, a month from now. Until then... Don't have nightmares, do sleep well. Good night. Good night.